In a process control class, it can be a little bit tricky to understand the link between the uh, Simulink code that we write in MATLAB and the actual transfer functions that we're working with. And I thought I would make this video to give you guys a walkthrough of how we can go from the theory in a state space model into actual MATLAB code that we plug into Simulink to figure out how our system is actually evolving uh, due to a perturbation in one of our specific inputs. And so to do that, I will first define a state space model. And uh, it's important to note these state space models have already been linearized, uh, performing the uh, linear algebra equations uh, discussed in other videos. And this state space model will be of the form dx1 bar dt, where x1 is some state variable of interest in output. And the bar denotes that this is a deviation which means it is how far away we are from a steady state value. And that will be equivalent to minus alpha one times X one bar. Alpha one denotes a uh, constant that is written in terms of given parameters such as densities or specific heat capacities. Um, and this will be equivalent, uh, we will also add a term beta one, which is another constant uh, with given parameters times an input deviation U one plus another input uh, u2 multiplied by some other constant beta2. And in this case, a question you would be asked uh, to model in Simulink or on an exam would be uh, find the transfer function of uh, an output, which in this case would be uh, y is typically the variable name, but in this case it would be equal to x1 bar uh, to an input which would be uh, u2 or u1. So in this case I'll do uh, u2. And so what we do is, uh, that, so we'll take the Laplace transform of our uh, state space model and we'll recall the definition of a Laplace transform of a derivative tells us that, uh, so if we take Laplace transform of dx1 bar dt, this quantity will be equal to s times Laplace transform x1 bar minus, and then x1 bar evaluated at zero um, for time. And uh, typically we will define our system to be at steady state at t equals zero. Consequently, uh, this value we can ignore and it will be equivalent to minus alpha one times Laplace transform of X one bar. And because we are only interested in input U two, we will pretend like uh, beta one times U one bar in our state space model doesn't exist. And we will uh, skip to beta two times Laplace transform of U two bar, the Laplace transform of deviations in your second input variable. And so now what we do is algebraically rearrange this equation because we want um, the output, which would be the Laplace transform of uh, x1 bar to the input, which would be the Laplace transform of u2 bar. And uh, to do that, the first thing we'll do is we'll move um, this term over to the left-hand side of our equation. We have the Laplace transform of x1 bar. That would be equivalent to beta two times Laplace transform of U two. And to get it into the form we need, uh, we just divide both sides and we end up with Laplace transform X one bar over Laplace transform U two bar is equivalent to uh, beta two divided by S plus alpha one. And uh, we're almost there in terms of getting into Simulink to put this code in. Um, the final thing we need to do is put it into another form that Simulink can recognize, which is where we define a variable called gain, which is k, and uh, a time constant tau times s plus one. And so in this case, uh, we can get there by dividing uh, this term by alpha one. And what we would find is that K would be equal to beta two divided by alpha one, and tau would be the same as uh, one over alpha one. 
And so that concludes the theory and the form that we need to have our state space model and our Laplace transform arranged in to actually perform the simulant code. So now that we have finished uh, defining the theory uh, behind the transfer functions, uh, we now go to MATLAB. And in MATLAB, we type in simulink to open up simulink, which is a space where we can actually define our uh, transfer functions. And simulink is a bit like LabVIEW. It doesn't necessarily involve uh, writing code explicitly. Instead, we are um, dragging figures around and then defining parameters within those figures. And so the first thing we can add to our system, if we wanted to generate an XY plot of how uh, our transfer function is going to impact an output in our system, is we can add in a step. And this step function will uh, tell the uh, simulink at what time is this perturbation applied to your system. And you can leave the defaults in, um, you can also modify them. I'll let you guys play with this and uh, find that stuff out. Uh, the other thing we add into our system is an XY graph and um, as well as the transfer function that we uh, just derived. So we are interested in transfer functions. And the transfer function we want is this first one here. And uh, the last element we will need in Simulink is a clock. And you can use the basic clock that they give you here. And what we do is this. So we're going to um, run our step function to our transfer function and our transfer function to the bottom part of the XY graph. And then we will run our clock into the top region of our XY graph because time will be our independent variable in this XY plot. And uh, this number here, 10.0, refers to the simulation time that we will be um, analyzing in our system. And uh, in the transfer function, uh, I will make up some values here. So let's say we had a um, gain value k of 0 0.2. And so 0 0.2 is going to be what goes in this numerator coefficients region. And tau, the time constant we derived, let's say it had a value of uh, 4. And uh, we'll leave this 1 here because uh, the form we had it in uh, had a 1 in it. So we're going to apply this and you'll note how this MATLAB is uh, smart enough to put in these actual variable uh, names into the uh, element on the screen. Uh, we will also want to simulate our region for 40 seconds. And on our XY plot, uh, so the X min, our start time is T equals zero, our independent variable, and the max time is 40, um, but what I'll do is I'll make this 50 so we can see how Simulink stops uh, processing at a certain point. And then we'll apply this and we'll press OK. And so now our code is running. We have defined k to be 0 0.2 and tau to be 4. When we run this code, we see an xy plot like this. And so initially when I was uh, being introduced to this stuff, it was confusing because what the heck am I looking at? <laughs> and so what happened here is this step function, which had a step time evaluated at 1, means that the perturbation was applied to your system at t equals 1. So if we look at our xy plot um, that was just generated by MATLAB, we'll note how at time 1, uh, we start to see a perturbation in our y-axis, our output. So our output variable um, which could be composition, for example, begins to change or, and deviate from its initial steady state value. So from t equals 0 to t equals 1, um, y is 0. The deviation from steady state is 0 because no perturbation has been applied to your system yet, which is what you would expect. Okay, so that's that. And um, so that's what your step function is doing here. Your transfer function is defining the gain here, and the gain tells you how much of a perturbation that defines the magnitude of the perturbation that is applied to your system. And so if we modify the gain value to something like 0 0.8, uh, we'll first make a note of how this plot here 
uh, reaches a steady state value of approximately 0 0.2. And what this means is that your steady state, so if we were looking at degrees Kelvin, for example, it would mean that we would have a positive increase of uh, 0 0.2 degrees Kelvin after applying some perturbation of magnitude 0 0.2 to our system. And uh, these models can get very complex, so um, I'm just trying to keep it as simple as I can for now. So if we increase the gain to 0 0.8, what we'll see is when we apply this, press OK, and then rerun our simulation, um, this gain now is much larger uh, in value. And then uh, in case you're wondering what this time constant tau is doing, uh, so it's defining how long it is taking our system to reach a new steady state point after we have perturbed it uh, at the step time. And so if we increase tau, so instead of four, if we make this eight, what we'll see is that it's gonna take even longer uh, to reach this steady state value around 0 0.8. So we're gonna press okay there. I'm gonna close this. We're going to rerun the code. And you'll note how this graph is now increasing at a slower rate. And uh, finally, uh, the last thing I'd like to make note of is how, so we'll see how our system at t equals 40, uh, the plot stops. So if we uh, modify what our um, uh, simulation time is here to something like uh, 50, uh, we would be able to make use of the full uh, graph and uh, yeah, and so you guys can see that uh, this concludes the Simulink uh, tutorial as well as the theory behind it. Thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.